Hey everyone, this is James from AirFX Controllers. Uh, today I'm just doing kind of a quick tutorial on how to switch out the LED in your Xbox One controller. I've gotten numerous messages, people kind of curious on the process because they want to give it a shot on their own. So I figured the best way to go ahead and knock that out was to make a quick video kind of displaying it because it's easier to see visually rather than writing out in text. So uh, what you'll need is your controller, a lighter if you have a torch such as this one, your solder, your uh, really fine point tweezers, uh, a T8 and a T6 screwdriver. Um, you can also buy a kit on Amazon where it's just kind of a universal kit and you have all kinds of different attachments. But for this video I'm just going to use these two so you can kind of differentiate which one I'm using. And uh, these are also magnetic tipped so it's a little bit easier to guide the screws when you're putting them back inside of the controller when reassembling. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and start breaking this controller down. Uh, you have your two side handles. Uh, you can use a pry tool if you'd like, which comes in the kit. It looks like this, but I've just kind of gotten to the point where I get my fingernails in there and just pop it off like that and just kind of set any pieces aside that you start taking apart and kind of keep it organized so you don't lose anything. Go ahead and take off your back battery pack. Uh, we have a total of five screws. You're going to have two on each side in the corners and then you have one that's hidden under your label. So we're just going to use our T8 screwdriver and we're going to start taking this apart. And this controller has been opened before so it's uh, pretty noticeable on mine but you're going to have your label and if you can't really see where the hole is you just use your thumb and make an indention and it, if you can still kind of see how it kind of makes a circular groove around the sticker and just kind of poke your screwdriver through it or there's always the option of completely taking off the label. It's just whatever your preference is. Okay, now that everything is loosened, again, sometimes a screw won't come through the label and they'll stay in there. That's perfectly fine. Just remove it and carefully place it to the side. Now the front plate should just kind of fall off, like so. And when working on this, I always take off the joysticks just so the controller lies a little bit more flat on the table and not fumbling around. So put those somewhere where you don't lose them. And go ahead and flip your controller over. Uh, just a fair warning right off the bat, there are two black rectangles where the trigger comes down and meets. Do not touch that because your body gives off enough static electricity to the point where it might fry it and your triggers won't work. It's uh, not fun when that happens. I'm actually working on top of an anti-static mat. Um, but again, just to kind of give you a closer view, refrain from touching that with your fingers or anything if you can help it. Okie dokie. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, turn on our soldering iron and get that heated up. And while that's heating up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, explain what's going to happen next. If you look there, you have two small screws. Those are the T6 size. Make sure it's getting hot. Okay. And so go ahead and pop these two screws out with your T6. You can go ahead and throw that in whatever storage compartment you're using or just set it to the side in its own group to where you won't be hitting it with your elbows or hands. Alright, and if you look, we have a total of eight wires soldered to this back. Uh, we're gonna, before you start soldering them off, what's really helpful is if you kind of just make a note to yourself on where things go. So if you look, uh, you have black, gray, and then red, black. So just kind of write B, G, R, B. And the motors are actually different sizes if you look. This is a smaller one, and then you have your larger one. So just go ahead and write L for little. And now on this side, it's gray and black. It's basically just mirrored. And then black, red and then write big. So your notes should look like this. You can come back to the video and kind of look at mine if you forgot to do this. So when you're soldering, this is how everything is going to go back. So we're going to set that aside. Uh, soldering iron should be hot enough by now. And go ahead and grab your solder and soldering iron. You only need a little bit of solder to get these off. So go ahead and do that. Grab your fine point tweezers. Kind of move everything out of the way. 
and just kind of roll the solder over the contact points and it should just pop off just like that. So go down, do that to all eight. Okay, now all our wires are freed up. Go ahead and either turn off your soldering iron or for mine I have the option of lowering how much gas flow goes through it. So I'm just going to set that on one because we're going to be using it fairly soon. Your motors should slide out. Remember, big is on the right, little is on the left. Just kind of set it aside. And now that our screws are out, you should have done that before soldering. You simply just get both fingers. Remember, do not touch those two black rectangles. And just kind of apply a little bit of back pressure, and it should just pop. And what you're going to do next is tilt it so it's floating in the back, and then just slide out, and it clears everything. Now you're just going to set that aside, and now what we're left is this front board. So these are all T6 screws. There's six of them total. So we're just going to go around and take these out. But now that we have all the screws out, um, again, make sure all are gone. You don't want to be forcing this board and then realize that you forgot to take one out. You just put your fingers there. It's almost kind of like a bowling ball. You lift, kind of the same story as the back board, and then you're just going to pull down lightly until it pops out on its own. You don't want to force it or anything like that. So what we're left with is the front board and we're just going to set this to the side because we're going to be coming back to this pretty soon here. Um, your LED is located right there. There is a pink one on this one. Yours is going to look white. Um, I changed my friends out to pink. I wasn't amused so we're going to change colors to blue this time around. But it's one LED as opposed to the Xbox 360 where you had your ring of four. So we're just going to take our soldering iron, turn the gas back up if you did adjust it down or plug your electric one back in. Speaking of soldering irons, this is my favorite one I've used, the burns o -Matic. You can pick this one up at uh, Lowe's if you have that store near you and go ahead and pick up a bottle of fuel as well since that's what's powering this. And this is my favorite by far. It has different attachments for the top. It's really easy to regulate how hot it gets and overall it's just my favorite if you're in the market for a soldering iron. So, just going to get some solder. Get a decent amount of solder for this. I found this is the easiest method. Do this and kind of just ball it up on your tip. And what we're going to do now is if you look closely, we're just going to kind of almost blob it over the LED so it's touching both contact points. So it heats up both sides and your LED should just come right off like there. Now we're left with just contact points. And the LED is on the tip of my soldering iron, so we're just going to go ahead and wipe that off. You can use a sponge. I know that's the proper way to go about this, but I actually prefer cardboard. Just It cleans it off, and then after you're done with it, you can use your sponge to clean it off that way. So we're left with the board. Uh, go ahead and get your LED out of whatever packaging it came out of. And look at under the LED for the symbol. I can't begin to show you the symbol on mine since these are so small. But just look at the different symbols online. There's guides for positive, negative. And just kind of look up which way you need to be putting your LED on. Because they vary. So I know mine goes this way. Since on the bottom of mine it's kind of that T. And the flat side goes left. And the extension goes out right. So going to try to set this on the board so I can grab my soldering iron. Okay, there we go. And you only need a very small amount of solder on your tip, just a little ball. Because it does not take much to secure this in place. So go ahead and do that. I kind of pin the board down so it doesn't fumble around. And you just kind of run the solder over one side, make sure it connects. Wait for it to just dry really fast, shouldn't take more than 2-3 seconds. And now that the LED is secured, there's no need for the tweezers. And you just go to the other side and do the same thing. Make sure it has a solid connection. You can go back and kind of touch up if you are not happy with the way the first went down. And once you're happy with the way your solder came out, you just Start reassembling the controller. Again, we have to go back and solder the rumble motors and trigger motors back on. 
So we're just going to turn the gas down again. So now here you can't just slide the board back in. These top pieces won't allow it. So what we're going to have to do is start kind of breaking the top down as well. The triggers, you just pull up on that back as I did there and it should just fall off. Now something to be careful with is the center piece that protects around the power button. Is There is a sync button, but it's free floating. It's not attached really in any way and it can go flying across the room and then you're going to be out of luck because they're near impossible to find. So remove that very slowly so this piece comes up and there is the sync button. I always take it off now. I used to leave it on but I found it falls off and you never even notice. And if you do take this top part off and your sync button all of a sudden is missing and it's not there, look inside because sometimes it'll get caught up in there since it's uh, a tacky sort of film and it'll get stuck there. So just set everything aside. Again, the trigger. Just pop up the back and it just comes right off. So now your front board is able to be laid back into place and just goes right in the grooves, you know, make sure everything is good. If your board is sitting uneven or it doesn't look right, sometimes what happens is the AXBY buttons will pop out from you setting down your controller. They spin just a little bit and the little clips they have around the side aren't going into their grooves they need to be and so you need to just pull up that gray piece, reset everything, make sure it's all flush and then just pick up where we are right here. And before you start putting things back together, what I do is I typically secure it with one or two of the T6 screws, primarily over the buttons because as I spoke earlier, sometimes they kind of pop up and then get fumbled around. So screw that in. And once that's secure, go around and I usually just do one or two to make sure everything's in place so I can go ahead and put some of the small pieces back onto the controller. So I don't have to worry about, you know, where they're floating around on the table. So just go ahead and grab your small sink button. It slides in on the right side. And now take your top piece and roll it kind of backwards forwards. Make sure the USB plug-in is lined up with the piece. And you should just be able to click it right in. And now take your triggers. And you see this long piece. You just slide it into that little crevice there. And it should just click right back in. And if it's not, if it has resistance and it's not wanting to go in, sometimes it'll snag something on the way down. Just simply pick it right back out and reset it, and then it should just go right back in. So we're going to finish up screwing all these T6 back in. So Okay, once you have all six back in place, um, these trigger wires, just make sure they're off to the side. So they're not going to be pressed down when we put this analog board back in. Pick this up very carefully. Make sure you don't touch those black rectangles. And you're just going to slide it under the triggers first. And wait for it to kind of settle. And if you look, it's going to match up with a little clip right there. And you just simply push forward. And then I always press down in this area and push. So it should click twice. And now everything is secured. But now you need to put the two T6 screws right back in to where they were in the bottom corners. And you can do this after you solder your wires back on, but I typically do it before because I'll either forget or the wires will get in the way. It's just easier to do this first. Okay, once those are secure, just turn your torch back up or plug it back in. And while that's heating back up, we're going to uh, kind of look at our notes, review them, make sure the paper doesn't hit the soldering iron like I almost did. Um, and now we're going to take our motors, and if we look, remember our notes, left side has the little motor, and then on the right is the big motor. So pull your motors out wherever you had them stored. I'm going to go ahead and throw the big motor back in, just slide the wires through that little sleeve it has. And then same for this side. And once your soldering iron is hot enough, you're just going to solder the wires right back on. So get your tiny bit of solder on the tip. Take your fine needle nose tweezers. Have your notes nearby so you can just kind of look at them as you go. And 
And if you want to go back and check the uh, integrity of your soldering, just kind of tug on the wires lightly. Uh, don't mean try to rip them out, but just kind of make sure everything is securely fastened. Because last thing you want to do is throw this controller back together and then realize one of your motors isn't functioning properly because of a loose wire. So just tuck that right back in. Uh, throw your joysticks on. It's just fairly easy. These grooves line up with the little sticks that pop out. And just kind of click down and do a few circles, make sure everything's secured. Uh, take your front plate, it just goes right over. And now on the back plate, you have these two metal prongs that pop out for the battery. Just make sure those slide through. You don't want to have that be resisting going through and then bend it. And if your trigger gets stuck, I'll try to make mine get jammed up because it's a fairly common thing to happen if they're having resistance. Like for example, this one, it's not wanting to go down. You just simply push on the outside in and then you're fine after that. That's one thing that you don't want to do again is put it back together and realize one of your triggers isn't going down. So now just we're going to put all five T8 screws back in. Now on your little side handles, uh, you have your left and right one. Just make sure when you're putting them back on, you have them lined up with the clips and then you simply just kind of slap it. If it didn't go down correctly, you probably missed one of the slots where it's supposed to go or you just didn't get an even hit and maybe it's still sitting outside of one clip. It's never a big deal, it's an easy fix. So same thing and everything's back on properly. Just going to throw the batteries back in. Wait for it! And there we go. We have a blue LED. It is no longer the boring factory white. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to shoot me a message on YouTube, or you can venture over to my Facebook with my custom gaming art. I'll post a link in the description, or you can go to Facebook and just search Air Effects, A-I-R space E-F-F-E-X. I'll be happy to answer any questions or comments that you want to throw my way. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll try to make a few tutorial videos with other things in the near future.